Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Unity Visual Scripting video. Today, I would like to show you what I've been working on and how I've been making use of the subgraphs you can find on my itch page. As you can see in this scene, I've got a little character here who I have full control over. Very simple and straightforward use of the simple character controller subgraph. Uh, I've got a little scene I can walk around, something I can interact with that makes use of the drag and drop subgraphs, as well as my randomizer subgraphs and my dictionary saver subgraphs. So let me show you exactly how I have put this all together so you can get an idea of how you can put these subgraphs to use in your projects. Before I dive in, I want to stop for a moment and say thank you for watching this video. I hope that you can get something out of this video, and if you do, please go down below the video and click that like button. If you have any questions or any comments, anything that you want to know, get down there and leave me a comment. While you're down there, go ahead and click that uh, that subscribe button for me, would you? Pretty please? Pretty please? All right, thanks. I am going to start by showing you the script machine that I've got attached to the character. There's actually two of them here. I'll get to this one a little bit later, the new animation controller, because this is something specific to the project I'm working on and less geared towards an offering on itch. But as you can see in the character, very simple. I have a variable on the character itself, which controls the actual speed at which the character moves. So it can change over time. And I just have the simple character controller there. That's it. And then I have my little to-do graph here to remind me later that I got more stuff to do on it. Very simple and straightforward. I just slap this thing down and I got this guy walking around. Mind you all, the, again, the animations and stuff, that's a wholly different beast here. As you can see, I've got all kinds of stuff happening here. But the best part about this animation controller that I've built is that this will work on any uh, character because it uses the actual velocity of the rigid body to determine the look direction for the animation here. And uh, that feeds it into the actual animator here by setting our floats through a special process because I've got a layered character with multiple different uh, objects attached to it. So it has to go through for each piece and set the animators and everything. So I've got this little thing that loops through all the body parts and sets the floats and everything on them all. Next, we're going to take a look at the script machines attached to the mark. These don't necessarily use my offerings here, but as you'll see, I do have another to-do. Very, very fond of having this little to-do subgraph there. But as you can see, I've got some ways to deal with triggering things. Um, when you enter the trigger, check to see if the scene variable interactable is set and if it is or isn't it does different things here and then i've got one happens if we when we exit the trigger and then what happens when we collide and again got a to-do list because i haven't finished a lot of these systems and then it closes the ui speaking of the ui let's dig into the script built into the loot canvas and its uh, children here. We're going to start with the state machine I have built into the loot canvas. State machines are something that I haven't gone over before, and I feel like at some point in the future, I should probably make a video discussing these. But for now, I just want to show you how I've got a state machine working with all the stuff that I've got here. First thing we do is we have the start state, which when we enter the state, we set this as being our scene variable for loot canvas so it's easy to access and then we close it i always like to start with my canvases open in the scene view but automatically close when it starts that gives me more full control and as you can see here my actual events that trigger the transitions are actually called close ui or toggle ui um as you can see one opens it triggers the transition or there and then so we start in the start state and we init immediately go into the close state. This is where it gets a little bit more complicated. So you'll see here, when we first enter the state, 
we use our canvas group to disable it where it's still running it just doesn't show up in the scene and then we determine how many times we have to loop through the children so that we can destroy any children in there because keep in mind even though this is our first time closing it we will go back into the state every time so we have to make sure that no children exist when it closes and then once it does that it has to do that again for the second canvas because technically we have two different things we have the player pocket and then we have the children which is the actual loot canvas there for the uh mark and so it circles through these and it destroys those objects as well but it also adds the item to the player's inventory right here you see player inventory add item which we'll get to that in a bit here and how that works and then we have every update we check to see if it's interactable so the actual canvas itself says hey do we have an interactable set and if so then we wait for a button press and once we get that button press then we'll open the ui and then of course to open the ui we hit this transition there and then we go into the open state and the open state does the same thing the first thing we do is when we open this we get our loot table from the interactable and then we use the weighted randomizer to spawn things in there spawn items in see that i've got a little master list i'll show you that in a second here too when we get down to it and then once we've spawned one or more items in here this will be changed this is just temporary to make it use but it spawns it in then it sets the loot canvas again shows us that there and then here's more to do and then it automatically closes itself after a certain amount of time simple straightforward good stuff in it good stuff and then of course from there it'll just go back to the close date next up is the loot inventory section of the loot canvas as you can see it is a very simple graph i've got here uh, using the mouse click subgraph and if we left click it will close the ui there, there's more that i want to have done in there but it basically as long if you click on the canvas itself it closes the ui and then we've got the player pocket which is very similar but different this one actually has the drop zone and so when we drop i have a to-do list to allow for dropping more than one but it just closes the ui as well as soon as you drop it it just ui is gone so you don't have to worry about getting rid of it or have it go away or anything like that next to show off is the crafting system this one i am especially proud of here uh, let me go ahead and show you how this thing works it is by far the most in-depth system that i've got put in place <laughs> gotcha no really let's uh dig down a little bit deeper into the item manager now this one actually there's a lot to this one but there is nothing here if you look it's just an empty graph there's, there's nothing here this one is all about the variable here called master list it allows me to use a string just a simple string to grab an item an object here to spawn it that's how this loot canvas works here when we open it you'll see we take the loot table and the randomizer and then we use the item from the master list to actually spawn this item in here with the instantiate and the final piece that i want to show you here is what i've been working on for the player inventory mind you this isn't finished yet either none of this is finished this is just a preliminary that i want to show you here inside the player inventory you see we have on start we set the player inventory scene variable we load the inventory contents dictionary from the save variables and we dump that into this object's inventory contents variable and then we have this add item here which is what we were calling previously we take our inventory contents and we see if the item already exists inside the dictionary and if it does we just increment it by the number that we're adding here or and if it doesn't we just straight up add it and then we save the dictionary every time we add an item we save the dictionary i'm going to be doing something similar for removing items and so on and so forth but we'll get there in time for now that is how i have taken these subgraphs that i've built and have available on my itch page and have put them to use i hope this can inspire you to do something similar i want to take this opportunity to thank you for watching this video please again if you enjoyed 
this video. If you learned anything from it, please click that like button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below the video. So if there is something that you want to know now, let me know and I will see what I can do about teaching that to you right away. See you guys again next time. Have a great day.